Back with you now on the news feed late night. Reporting continues on Newsroom Africa Channel 405. Private hospitals in Guazulu Natal have been granted permission to erect temporary structures in order to deal with the influx of COVID-19 patients. This was announced by the province's health MEC, Noma Gugu Similane Zulu, who said that both public and private health facilities were under severe strain as the province records the highest number of active COVID-19 cases in the country. Joining me now to talk about the condition in Guazulu Natal is DAKZN spokesperson for health, Dr. Rishigan Virana. Dr. Virana, good evening and thank you very much for your time tonight. The Premier of Guazulu Natal, uh, talking earlier on, uh, uh, says there's no reason to panic. There are enough beds in Guazulu Natal at the moment to deal with the pandemic. Is that the case? Good evening to you, good evening to your viewers. The main problem is, is that these beds may be present, and I heard the Premier's words earlier. The problem isn't the beds and the equipment. The problems are the staff. Our doctors, our nurses are overburdened. They're under immense, immense strain, both physical and psychological, and they aren't coping. In addition, the province has a shortage of 85 doctors and over 200 nurses. So while the beds may be there, the province does not have the staff capacity to man those beds. As we saw at the incident at Wentworth Hospital, a video that went viral on social media in the province uh, just this past weekend. So the MEC is saying they've had to intervene in public health facilities, especially in Etreguini, where high infection rates have been recorded. And they have now put some structures uh, outside of their facilities uh, to put up as temporary measures. I mean, is that going to help at all? I mean, if you're saying the real challenge here is that you don't have personnel to be able to even mend those temporary structures. Again, the... the with the success of these structures outside the hospitals are, will be dependent upon staff availability. So we saw an incident with these flu clinic type tents outside Northdale Hospital in Peter Maritzburg, where people were in those tents for such a long time just to get care. And unfortunately, one person actually died in one of those uh, flu clinic tents at Northdale Hospital. So again, the temporary measures of, of beds and field hospitals and tents at outside uh, physical hospitals are all good and well, but until the province deals with the shortages of staff, the burnout among staff, and the plan to hire new staff when uh, they go into isolation and quarantine, that is the main problem. It is not just the beds themselves. And if KZN wants to overcome this challenge, the only way they're going to do it is to have a proper human resources plan. Now, talk to me then about uh, what uh, you're experiencing as a doctor yourself uh, currently, uh, as, as far as the level of fatigue and, and, and being overwhelmed of, by, by health professionals. What, what are they experiencing on the ground? And uh, uh, when is it likely going to uh, be a peak for Guazulu Natal as far as this uh, second wave is concerned? At the moment, we are not sure what, or I mean, sorry, we're not sure when the peak will be. Um, at our last portfolio committee, the approximate date that we were given was the 15th of January. However, that was not, that was just an, an assumption but that the department was working on. However, as we see the case numbers continuing to rise in KwaZulu-Natal, it is quite obvious that this surge will be with us for many months ahead. Now, we do get a lot, many calls, messages uh, from colleagues who are in the public, public and private sector treating patients, and they are under immense strain, not just physical, but psychological as well. You have doctors and nurses who are treating their colleagues, who are signing death certificates 
on colleagues that they were working with not a month or two ago. And they are experiencing immense psychological strain because of this. And the main thing that we are as well pushing for is for there to be the proper psychological support and debriefing services for these staff members. Because in addition to just the psychological strain of losing colleagues, they also have the fear that they may take the they may get infected and they will take the virus home to their families. Yeah. Now at, at this time, during this peak, the, the department put out a call for medical personnel who are outside of the field at the moment to come back and assist. Now, I put my name forward to the department to assist. Now, I just hope that this placement will happen soon enough so that we can relieve some of the pressure. Now, given, of course, uh, the uh, unprecedented circumstances that we are dealing with in South Africa and I suppose throughout the world, are other health professionals also following your example uh, and heeding the call uh, by the MEC to come back into the system and assist? Well, I, in a statement, I urged members who can do it to try and come back and assist. At the end of the day, the people who are under strain at the moment are uh, people who we studied with at university, who we did our internship with, our community service, and they are under strain, they need our systems. But this can't be a blanket call either because there are people out there who, have, who are elderly, who have comorbidities. They can't be expected to come back. They are high risk as well. However, if somebody is capable, is still having a current registration with their professional body, if they're willing, let, the, let them try and volunteer. But again, the department as well needs to have a proper plan in place of placement, as well as uh, assistance for people to come in and volunteer and assist during this crisis, because we are in a crisis. As KwaZulu-Natal, we have almost 5, 000, five to 6,000 new infections per day. And this is putting immense strain on our facilities, both public and private. All right, uh, Dr. Rishigan Virana, appreciate your time and thank you for joining us tonight, speaking for the DA in Gozulu Natal.